welcome back to the channel and this short video 50 years of nature boy so i'm just turned 50 where did it all start is it nature or nurture i think i can say it's nature i think it's in you and the nurture just encourages your passion and your addiction and your fascination for the natural world for sure my brother and i uh very different i've always been passionate about the natural world natural world and my brother he's really been a mathematical genius and someone that spends all of his time on a computer so i would say the nature has to be there first and then the nurture to encourage it for sure um really it all started from beyond memory but for sure i used to um spend a lot of time at my nanny williams's uh, house my mum was at work and I was off sick from school. I was all sniffling and that kind of kid. I'd be dropped off at my nan's. And of course, most grandparents, really, they're more lenient on the kids than the actual parents are. That's the way of the world, isn't it? And she'd let me lift up the rockery uh, in her garden and find such species as wood lice and that kind of thing, and spiders. Um, in the summertime, when the flowers were in her garden, I would get to see and understand things like hoverflies, wasps and bees and work out the difference. And like all small kids, I worked out the difference the hard way. And when you learn the hard way, you learn the quick way. So if the hoverfly stung me and I ran off to Nan crying with a bee sting in my hand, it was definitely not a hoverfly. So I soon got my eye in there and I'd catch things. And then as I got older and a bit later on, places like this, ponds my nan would take me to a park called eastfield park and at the time there were amazing ponds there bigger than this and they were chock full of wildlife newts and sticklebacks especially but of course when you're small it's the mini beasts that you notice more than the adults tend to notice giant red water mites water boatmen oh my god they can bite or pierce you with their piercing mouth parts pond skaters daphnia water fleas the tiny things were just as fascinating as maybe the slightly bigger things like newts and sticklebacks but for sure anywhere where there's water has pulled and drawn me in because i know that's just going to be full of fascinating wildlife but of course under rocks and underwater and so on and so forth so i went from you know keeping these or rather catching and observing these amazing animals i could find caterpillars my goodness me caterpillars fascinated me i'd be late for school at primary age because i'd be dawdling along the street on the way to school looking at leaves on certain bushes in people's front gardens that i knew often held caterpillars i haven't done that for years and i really should the array of caterpillars i used to find in their fascinating form some that looked like twigs that moved some that were just striking some that were hairy some that were colorful what a fascinating world the caterpillar world is but eventually those caterpillars went into um, old sweet jars with some food plants to see what they'd turn into. Eventually, the stuff that I was catching here, the newts and the fish, I became fascinated in keeping and studying in, in captivity. Um, and as I got older and I actually went fishing on my own with my mates, I'd come back with buckets of fish all the time. Tiny pike, pike, an inch and a half long, three of them I caught once in a net under the weed that you get on the surface of this kind of pond in the summertime, the blanket weed algae. The next day there was two. They were the same size exactly, and yet one swallowed one of its siblings whole. It took two days to digest it all the way down, and the next day or two, it ate the other sibling. Not very nice, but amazing behavior. An animal that could swallow an identical size animal, the same size. I learned that they could swallow sticklebacks, and the spikes of the stickleback would try and pierce through the pike's tummy skin, but it never did. It got digested absolutely amazing and of course i let it went on to fishing and so on and so forth and those animals that that i caught locally and studied and kept in jars and fish tanks aquaria all kinds of things eventually i was interested in buying some exotic pet because certainly when you're young the stuff that's around you never seems quite as interesting as the more difficult to obtain stuff from far far away so the stuff that David Attenborough was showing me on TV reptiles from tropical climes, insects and so on. In the end, I had to just get myself some kind of exotic pet. Stick insects were my first acquisitions.
My first ever shop bought exotic pet was a stick insect, a male giant prickly stick insect, very similar to this male jungle nymph. He's pretty cool. But let's have a look at his girlfriend because the female jungle nymph, very nice indeed. So here she is, the female. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Wow, look at that. The female jungle nymph is a splendid stick insect indeed and they can get twice this size they're i think the top three kind of heaviest insect in the world and i've been keeping insects and that was a leg of an insect going across the lens i've been keeping it's going to do it again oh look at that there it is oh that's kind of quite spooky like some horror film yeah thanks for that <laughs> i've been keeping insects like these from a very early age indeed She's absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if we can... I don't know if that's focusing very well. I should be wearing my glasses, really. The boy's kind of photobombing with his feet. <laughs> but I have to say, I think insects make fantastic pets for people of all ages. And this was my first ever... This kind of animal was my first ever shop-bought exotic pet. And I've been keeping this kind of thing a very long time indeed. And I still breed stick insects and hissing cockroaches and I absolutely delight in sending the offspring common cold attack in sending the offspring to all and sundry very often on social media people will say to me Dave have you got any giant snail babies any hissing cockroaches and especially stick insects for my son or my daughter you should really encourage your kids to have pets as long as you can make them understand the responsibility and it is a responsibility, but they'll learn so much. Um, and also, the fact that, you know, the responsibility is down to, is down to, you know, that prickles. Your children are not you to look after them. And that's, of course, the sticking point, isn't it, with pets and kids. It's usually mum that ends up looking after them. We'll put these guys away and see what's next. Another pet I got after Fred, the first giant prickly stick insect was another Fred, they were all called Fred in those days, an axolotl. I got bored of him in the end, I wanted that aquarium back for something else, and I gave him to my friend Keith's mum, and she kept that, that axolotl, that amphibian, for I think, I think, I can't remember, I've written it down somewhere, but something like 15 years, 18, I think he lived to be 18 years old, and he grew over a foot long, what a beast. And of course, who doesn't love? Norma and her, your podgy Norma, her hedgehoggy kind. And nowadays, I get to work with animals like her. <laughs> Norma. <laughs> oh, we've both got a double chin, Norma. <laughs> oh, she cracks me up. I get to work with amazing animals like Norma the Hedgehog and lots of others. Um, obviously things I've been fascinated in since a child and I've looked after hedgehogs on and off probably most of my life. Just the odd one here and there that's been injured or hungry. Just as an impromptu thing before releasing them back to the wild. And sometimes I get real lucky and get to play with super cute, super cute and reared tame foxes. How lucky am I? Huh? What are you doing? Isn't she a fuss pot? Oh yeah. Oh, she's such a gorgeous girl. Look at her. Let's see what she does. She goes, zoom zoom. So it goes on and on. 50 years of being nature boy. Learn something new every week for sure. See new things all the time. Learn new behavior all the time. And get to meet and experience wonderful parts of the natural world, whether it's plants or animals, creepy crawlies, great big snakes, fish, and even, Susan, even beautiful foxes 
randomly that have come into my life. Amazing. Enjoy the rest of the video. Now, if I had to pick my two most favourite examples of British wildlife, it would have to be finding a great crested newt. The male in breeding dress is out of this world. Or I think pipping it to number one for me would have to be adders. I absolutely adore them. The way they move, the way they feel, the way they look. What a most fantastic, iconic species they are. Of course, my love of the natural world has taken me all over the world, even as far away from England as you can get, Australia, visiting friends and visiting their amazing wildlife. Here in the Blue Mountains, I'm observing, and I did manage to catch it, oops, and have a slightly closer photo, but I cannot find it. Here's a Highlands Copperhead, one of Australia's venomous snakes. Incredibly beautiful and quite a big snake. And the beautiful surroundings that you're finding these animals in, so different from where we live in England, it makes the whole thing an experience never to forget. Here in October, just coming out of their sort of brumation hibernation period. This next okay, video skews the quality, black, but this was small, trying to tail a red-bellied black snake, another one of Australia's venomous but beautiful snakes. <laughs> Unsuccessful because the snake was young and fast, and I'm getting old and slow. <laughs> <laughs> and here a blue-tongued skink yes, in the wild, rather than in a pet shop. <laughs> The third bird of prey I ever kept as a lad was, <laughs> you can't see him, was a European eagle owl, much like a very broody, Roscoe, Roscoe, Roscoe. <laughs> the very broody Roscoe the European eagle owl. Between the barn owl, Barney, and Ollie, the European eagle owl, there was a lovely Bengal eagle owl, and then came a beautiful snowy owl. Until I realised the diurnal birds of prey were far more interesting and far more enjoyable to work with. Nowadays, of course, I don't just still love the tiny things. I get to work with creatures like where's all the bald eagle here and golden eagles and peregrine falcons so from the humble beginnings of wood lice or moving on to even the beginnings of bird of prey care barn owls nowadays at 50 years old i get to work with train and fly wild and free eagles vultures falcons kites all sorts of amazing animals what a cool guy this is Wurzel, and he's coming up for five years old, and he's just kind of getting his bald eagle, white head and white tail. Grounded for another few weeks, and then soon back up in the air for his spring and summer shows where he soars high above and really wows his audience. But for now, just chilling out. I still keep and study grass snakes, of course, but of course, I also keep. <laughs> somewhat larger snakes such as this such as this such as this australian black-headed python ah, that's my nose don't you dare absolutely glorious creatures 
even more importantly, I've been so fortunate to see the nature versus nurture in practice with my own two children growing up around animals and seeing their own fascination with the natural world, but at slightly different tangents and the part of it or the sides of it that they, that they enjoy. For me, as I get older in my 50th year, watching my kids grow and their interests grow and change and their lives woven in the natural world gives me more joy than anything else. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye on the channel because the full length nature boy from tiny to, I don't know, teenager is all in a book. Keep an eye here. When it comes out, you can read a bit more about nature boy exploits and the kind of things that I want you guys to do with your kids and grandchildren. Just the exploits of going out into the countryside. Do you know what? Just take an interest in the little things which are just as fascinating as some strange whopping great creature from the plains of Africa. Please hit subscribe. See you soon.